Hi everybody, welcome back to Beginning Algebra. Today we're in section 5.2 and we're going to be talking about integer exponents and the quotient rule. So we're going to be introducing negative exponents today. Our objectives in this section are to learn the zero exponent rule. We'll also talk about how to use negative numbers as exponents. We'll get the quotient rule for exponents and then we'll do some more problems with combinations of all the rules together. And again, just like last time, working the problems that use combinations of the rules are the most valuable problems for you in this section. You have to learn the rules first, but you're hardly ever going to see problems that just require one rule, or they're never going to tell you what rule to use. So you have to get good at looking at a problem and deciding which rule to use, and sometimes there's more than one. So we really want to work toward this goal of being able to use combinations of the rules. Here we go. Okay, to help us figure out what it means for zero to be an exponent, let's go through this little exercise. We're going to evaluate each of the following expressions. Two to the fourth would be two times two times two times two. That's going to be 16. 2 to the 3rd would be 2 times 2 times 2, that's going to be 8. 2 to the 2nd, of course, is 4, and we know that 2 to the 1st power is just 2. Now, notice the pattern you're seeing here. Every time the exponent drops by 1, the value of the expression gets cut in half. So each time we decrease the exponent by 1, the value is divided by 2. And now using that pattern, let's go ahead and continue here. 16 divided by 2 gives us 8. 8 divided by 2 gives us 4. 4 divided by 2 gives us 2. 2 divided by 2 gives us 1. 1 divided by 2 gives us 1 half. Divide that by 2, you get 1 fourth. Because what happens here if you want to divide 1 half by 2 then you have to change this to multiplication. So 1 half divided by 2 is like 1 half times 1 half, and so that's going to be 1 fourth. Or you can just do this by common sense. Half of a half is a fourth. Half of a fourth is an eighth. So you see what happens to our pattern here, and notice that 2 to the 0 power is 1. And now there's nothing special here about the base of 2. Any base raised to the 0 power is going to have to equal 1. So here is the 0 exponent rule. For any non-zero number a, a to the 0 power equals 1. So for example, 17 to the 0 power equals 1. So just to be clear, remember that 17 to the first power would be 17. And so if you don't see an exponent written, you assume that exponent is a 1. 17 to the 0 power is 1. So any number to the 0 power is going to be 1. Now this is an easy rule to remember, but you have to make sure that you know what the base is. A lot of confusion comes in when people are not sure what the base of their exponent really is. So yes, anything to the 0 power is 1, but make sure that you know what the base of that 0 exponent is. So we're going to practice a little bit here using 0 exponents. We're going to evaluate each of these. So here we have 60 to the 0 power. Now the base here is 60, and we know any number to the 0 power is 1. So that one's not hard. And then let's look at part B. Here we have in parentheses negative 60 to the 0 power. So notice that the exponent is next to the parentheses, and that means everything in the parentheses is part of the base. So the base is negative 60, and any base to the 0 power is 1. Now look at part C. So what we have here is negative 60 to the 0 power, no parentheses. So in this case, the base is actually 60, and the negative is sitting out here as a factor that's being multiplied by this exponential expression. So if we write this in a multiplication form, it would actually be negative 1 times 60 to the 0 power. So now we know that any base to the 0 power is 1, so this expression becomes negative 1 times positive 1, and of course negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. 
Now let's look at part D. Here we have y to the 0 power. And you know it does not matter what y is. y is the base here. And we know that any base to a 0 power is 1. And then let's look at part E. Here we have 6 times y to the 0 power. So let's write it with a multiplication dot in between just to emphasize the fact that the base here is y. So any base to the 0 power is 1. So this is going to become 6 times 1, which of course is 6. But if we have 6y in parentheses to the 0 power, notice that the exponent is next to the parentheses. So that means the base is everything in the parentheses. So this time the base is 6y, and any base to the 0 power is 1. Here are the last two parts of example 1, and here we have a sum and a difference. So let's work on the sum. First, we want to evaluate each of these exponential expressions. So 8 to the 0 power would be 1, and then plus 11 to the 0 power, which is also 1, then 1 plus 1 is 2. On part h, we have negative 8 to the 0 minus 11 to the 0. Well, we know here that the negative is not part of the base. So the base of this first exponential expression is just 8. 8 to the 0 is 1. So here we have negative 1, then minus 11 to the 0, which is 1. So now we have negative 1 minus 1. That's going to be negative 2. Now I want you to notice that the zero exponent rule goes right along with the product rule. The two rules can never contradict each other. All of these exponent rules we're learning always have to agree with each other. So we're going to look at this expression two different ways. Here we have 6 to the 0 times 6 to the second. So first let's use our zero exponent rule here. We know that 6 to the 0 power is 1. And then we have times 6 to the second. Of course, 1 times 6 to the second is 6 to the second. But if we look at it using the product rule, then 6 to the 0 times 6 to the second, we would be able to add these two exponents together. So it would be 6 to the 0 plus 2, and 0 plus 2 is 2. So that would just give us 6 to the second. So here we are using the 0 exponent rule to evaluate, and here we're using the product rule to add the exponents, but they both give us the same result. Now let's talk about what happens when you have negative numbers as exponents. So this is the pattern that we developed several slides back, and we filled in these blanks previously. So I just want you to notice that when you have 2 to the negative 1, that puts 2 to the first power in the denominator. When you have 2 to the negative 2, that puts 2 to the second power in the denominator. And here 8 in the denominator is 2 to the third. So it looks like having a negative exponent just causes that power of the base to appear in the denominator. And in fact, that's exactly what happens. Notice that the negative exponents produce reciprocal values. So when we have a negative power, we end up with a reciprocal. And this is going to give us our negative exponent rule. So here is the official negative exponent rule for any non-zero number a and any integer n, a to the negative n power is equivalent to 1 over a to the positive n power. So sometimes we say that you can change the sign of an exponent by moving it to the denominator. So for example, 3 to the negative 2 would be 1 over 3 to the positive 2, and we know that 3 to the second power is 9. So that would make 1 over 9. Now notice that a to the positive n and a to the negative n are reciprocals. And we know that a number multiplied by its reciprocal always equals 1. So we should expect that when we do a to the n times a to the negative n, that product should be 1. Let's see what happens here. So I'm going to write both of these in a fraction form. This a to the n does not show a denominator, so I can write this as a to the n over 1. 
and a to the negative n we know is equal to 1 over a to the positive n. So now to multiply these together, we'll go top times top and bottom times bottom. a to the n times 1 is a to the n, same thing in the denominator, and then any number divided by itself is 1. So we see that when we multiply these two together, they do equal 1, and therefore we can be sure that these are reciprocals. The negative exponent rule can also be written a different way, so let me show you that. If you start with a to the negative n, we already know that this can be written as 1 over a to the positive n. But notice that 1 raised to any power is still going to be 1. So if we have 1 over a to the positive n, that can also be written as 1 to the n over a to the n. Now think about power rule C that we learned in the last section. This is kind of applying power rule C backwards. If you have the same power in the top and the bottom, you could kind of take that exponent and just write it one time for the whole fraction. So 1 to the n over a to the n can be written as 1 over a whole thing to the n power. So the bottom line is a to the negative n can also be written as 1 over a to the positive n. So let's practice with that rule just a little bit. Here we have 6 to the negative third power, so that's like a to the negative n power. So what this rule is telling us is that we can write the base as 1 over that base. So we can write this as 1 over 6, and then the power will change from negative to positive. So the negative 3 will become positive 3. So basically in this form, we're just letting the negative cause a reciprocal here. And once we've written the base in reciprocal form, we've kind of used up the negative part of the exponent, but the 3 is still there. So that's how I think of it. So now here is example 2. We want to write each of these expressions with positive exponents and then simplify. And if any of our problems have variables in them, you can just assume that those are not 0. Okay, so let's start with 3 to the negative 2. And we just want to write it with a positive exponent. So we know that if we move this whole thing to the denominator, it will have a positive exponent. So this can be 1 over 3 to the positive 2. Then we know 3 to the positive second power is 3 times 3, and that's 9. So this is going to say 1 over 9. Now sometimes I'll have students ask me, is it important to have the 1 over? And it is very important. Think about the difference between 10 and 1 over 10. 10 could be represented by a $10 bill, but 1 over 10 would be represented by a dime. So yes, having the 1 in the top makes a huge difference to the value of the number. Okay, here in part B we have 5 to the negative third power. So of course that can be written as 1 over 5 to the positive third power. And we know 5 to the third is 5 times 5 times 5. That's going to be 125. So this is 1 over 125. And then here in part C, we have 1 half to the negative fifth. Now here, let's use that second form of the rule that we learned. So we can get rid of the negative here by writing this 1 half in reciprocal form. So the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. And now we've kind of used up the negative part of the exponent, and the exponent will be positive 5. So we know 2 to the 5th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. If you work that out, that's going to be 32. So 2 to the 5th power is 32. Now here are a few more parts for example 2. We have 2 fifths raised to the negative 4th power. So first, I would like to get rid of the negative part of the exponent by writing this as a reciprocal. So 2 fifths will become 5 halves, and now the exponent will be positive 4. And now we can use power rule C to apply this 4 exponent to both the top and the bottom. So that's going to be 5 to the 4th over 2 to the 4th. Now 5 to the 4th we've seen a couple of times. We know that's going to be 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. So that's 625. And 2 to the 4th, we've also seen a few times, that's 16. 
So our final result here is 625 over 16. Part E is very similar to the last two that we've done, so if you want to, I encourage you to pause the video and try this one by yourself. Now I'll check it with you. So here we have 4 thirds to the negative fifth power, so I'm going to use up the negative part of the exponent by writing this base in reciprocal form. So I have 3 fourths to the positive fifth power. Now using power rule C, this will give us 3 to the fifth over 4 to the fifth. And you might have to go to a piece of scratch paper to work these out because these are a little larger than what we're used to. But 3 to the 5th power is going to be 243. And 4 to the 5th power is going to be 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. So basically that's like 16 times 64. And if you just work that out, you'll find that that's going to be 1024. So this expression ends up 243 over 1024. And now let's try part f. Here we have 4 to the negative 1 minus 2 to the negative 1. Now these two terms are separated by a minus sign, so they will not have a common denominator. What we're going to do is write 4 to the negative 1 as 1 over 4 to the first power, then minus 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 over 2 to the first power. And we'll just have to subtract these the old-fashioned way. First, notice that first power just means that basically we're dealing with 1 fourth minus 1 half. And then we'll need a common denominator. So I'll multiply this fraction by 2 over 2. That would give us 1 fourth minus 2 fourths. And 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So we're going to end up with negative 1 fourth. And here are the last three parts of example two. The thing about exponent problems is they only take a second, so they give us lots of different examples because there are lots of different ways these problems can look. So it's good to be exposed to lots of different kinds. So here we have three times p to the negative two. Now you have to ask yourself, what is the base of this negative two exponent? Well, the base of this negative two exponent is just p. The 3 is not part of the base. In fact, the 3 has its own exponent. So we could think of this as 3 to the 1st times p to the negative 2nd. And what we would want to do then is just make this negative 2 exponent a positive exponent by moving this factor to the denominator. So that would leave us with 3 over p to the 2nd. Now I did not move the 3 to the denominator because the 3 already had a positive exponent. I don't want to move any factors that already have a positive exponent. So leave the 3 in the top and just move the factors that have negative exponents. Because remember the goal is to write each expression with positive exponents. So we've accomplished that here. And now this one cannot be simplified further so this is where we stop. Now here we have something we have not seen before yet. We have 1 over x to the negative fourth. This is our first time to see a negative exponent in the denominator. And in just a few minutes, I'll teach you a better way to handle this. But right now, let's just use the rules that we already know and see what we can do with this expression. Remember the second form of the negative exponent rule that we just had? So we know that 1 can be written with any exponent at all. So 1 to any power is equal to 1. We could say that since we have x to the negative fourth in the denominator, we could write this 1 in the top as 1 to the negative fourth. So now we have 1 to the negative fourth over x to the negative fourth. Because these exponents are the same, we can put the fraction in parentheses and just write one exponent for the entire thing. So 1 to the negative 4th over x to the negative 4th is equal to 1 over x to the negative 4th. And now we can use our negative exponent rule to say that if we write this base in reciprocal form, we can have a positive exponent. So that would give us x to the positive 4th. Now, like I said, that's a little bit of a roundabout way of looking at this problem, and you'll get an easier way in a little while, but this is the only way we had available to us using the rules that we know so far. And then on part i, we have x to the third times y to the negative fourth. 
So remember, we always just want to use the negative exponent rule to move the factors with negative exponents to the other end of the fraction. So I'll leave this x to the third in the top, but I'll move this y to the negative fourth to the denominator, and it will become y to the positive fourth. And then since this base is x and this base is y, this is all we can do as far as simplifying this expression. Now sometimes students get confused and they think that a negative exponent means the number turns negative, but a negative exponent does not indicate a negative number at all. Negative exponents lead to reciprocals. So multiplying by a negative, yes, will give you a negative, but using a negative exponent will not change the sign of your number. So 3 to the negative 2, you know, is like 1 over 3 to the positive 2, which is 1 over 9, and that number is still positive. So just the fact that we used a negative exponent does not mean that we ended up with a negative answer. Now let's go back to this idea of having a negative exponent in the denominator. So it turns out that we can use this negative exponent rule whether the negative exponent appears in the top or the bottom. If you want to change a negative exponent to positive form, simply move that factor to the other end of your fraction. So here I have 2 to the negative third in the top and 3 to the negative fourth in the bottom. So all I have to do to make this negative 4 a positive exponent is just move this factor to the top. So this will be 3 to the fourth in the top, and then, of course, you already know that to make this negative exponent positive, I just move it to the denominator. So now I have 3 to the positive fourth over 2 to the positive third. 3 to the fourth power is 81, and 2 to the third power is 8. And so our final answer is 81 over 8. So that brings us to what we're going to call the negative to positive rules for exponents. So this is two different ways that you can handle negative exponents and just make them positive. So if you have a to the negative m in the top, you can make that positive by moving that to the denominator. If you have b to the negative n in the denominator, you can make that exponent positive by moving it to the top. And if you have a fraction that's raised to a negative exponent, you can make this exponent positive by just writing the fraction in reciprocal form. So that will turn your exponent positive. So for example, just like the problem we saw in the last slide, if we have 3 to the negative fifth over 2 to the negative fourth, we can make both of these exponents positive in the same step. We just move 3 to the negative fifth to the denominator. That makes its exponent positive. We move 2 to the negative fourth to the numerator. That will make its exponent positive. And so then we could evaluate these two exponents. And if we have 4 fifths to the negative third, we can simplify this by writing the fraction in reciprocal form, and that will let us change the negative exponent to positive. So let's practice here with example 3. So we want to write each of these with positive exponents and then simplify. Here we have 4 to the negative 2 over 5 to the negative third. Well, we know using our negative to positive rules that we can just take this 5 to the negative 3 and write it in the top with a positive exponent. And we can take this 4 to the negative 2 and write it in the bottom with a positive exponent. And now 5 to the third is 125, and then 4 to the second is 16. So our final answer is 125 over 16. Here on part B, we have m to the negative 5 over p to the negative 1. So just like we did on part A, we can just move each factor to the other end of the fraction to get a positive exponent. So that would give us p to the positive first power in the top, m to the positive fifth power in the denominator, and now you know that p to the first power is just p, so there's no reason to explicitly write this one, so we would just write this as p over m to the fifth power. And just in case anyone's wondering if it's really necessary to write it without the 1, yes it is. So with the 1 showing, this is not considered fully simplified. Okay, here we have a to the negative 2 times b all over 3 times d to the negative 3rd. Now remember that the unwritten exponents on the b and the 3 are both positive 1. 
So because these two exponents are already positive 1, we will not want to move these two factors. The two factors we do want to move are the a to the negative 2 and the d to the negative 3. So since I already know that the b and the 3 will not be moving, I'm going to go ahead and write those down. And now the d to the negative 3 will be moved to the top, and the a to the negative 2 will be moved to the bottom. And now we have b times d to the third over 3 times a to the second. All the exponents are positive, and there's no further simplifying that we can do, so this one is finished. Now on part d, we have x over 2y, all in parentheses, raised to the negative fourth power. So we have that negative to positive rule that says if we want to eliminate this negative on our outside exponent, we can just write the inside in reciprocal form. So I'm going to write this as 2y over x, and that will make this outside exponent positive. And now we can apply this 4 to each factor inside the parentheses. So this will become 2 to the 4th times y to the 4th over x to the 4th. And then we know that 2 to the 4th is equal to 16. So we'll now write this as 16y to the 4th over x to the 4th. Now here's one thing I do want you to keep in mind. We can't use this negative to positive exponent rule to change negative exponents to positive exponents if those exponents occur in a sum or a difference. So for example here where we have 5 to the negative second power plus 3 to the negative first power over 7 minus 2 to the negative third power, we would not be allowed to just move this 5 down to the denominator and make that negative 2 exponent become positive. And we would not be able to move this 3 to the negative 1 or this 2 to the negative third. Because of the sum and because of the difference, we can't use that negative to positive rule. So what we would have to do is we would have to make a reciprocal out of this little part of this sum. So we could write 1 over 5 to the second plus 1 over 3, and then we'd have this big fraction bar here, and then we'd have 7 minus 1 over 2 to the third. Now you'll learn in a later class how to simplify an expression like this, but for right now, we really don't want to have to mess with something like this. So I just want you to keep in mind that this rule we had only works on products and quotients. It does not work if your expression contains a sum or a difference. Now we're going to develop our next exponent rule, which is called the quotient rule. Let's get started by writing each of these quotients without exponents. So on this first one, 6 to the 5th would have to be written as 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 and 6 to the 3rd would just be 6 times 6 times 6. And now remember that any number divided by itself is 1. So each 6 in the top that matches a 6 in the denominator will divide out or cancel out and make a 1. So cancel, cancel, cancel. And that just leaves us with 6 to the 2nd power. Try it again here with 7 to the 2nd power divided by 7 to the 6th power. The top would be 7 times 7 and the bottom would look like this, and then each 7 in the top would cancel out a 7 from the denominator. And remember that we can't leave the top empty, so 7 times 7 is really the equivalent of 7 times 7 times 1. So what we have now is 1 over 7 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, fourth power. So from this little demonstration, you can probably see what the quotient rule is going to need to be. To divide exponential expressions with the same base, we just have to subtract the exponents. So notice that 5 minus 3 makes 2. And I started with the 5 because 5 is the larger number. And the thing is that we always want to leave our answer with positive exponents. So we say 5 minus 3 is 2. This one's positive, so that's fine. Here, to subtract and get 4 in the denominator, I would start with the larger exponent, which is the 6, and then 6 minus 2 would be 4. And because the larger number of 7s was in the denominator, those 4 leftover 7s I know belong in the denominator. 
So here is the official quotient rule. For any non-zero real number a and any integers m and n, a to the m power divided by a to the n power will be a to the m minus n. So in other words, to simplify this division, all we have to do is subtract the exponents. And remember, we have to have the same base in both top and bottom for this to work. So the way the quotient rule works is just keep the base the same and subtract the exponents. So here's an example. We have 5 to the 8th divided by 5 to the 2nd. 8 minus 2 is 6, so we'll have for our answer 5 to the 6th power. Now here's just a word of caution for you. A common mistake people make is to try to divide before simplifying. And this is a violation of the order of operations. Remember in PEMDAS, we have to handle exponents before we handle multiplying and dividing. So that definitely applies here. You can't say, oh, well, I'm going to divide these fives, and then five divided by five is one, and eight minus two is six. It does not work that way. So what you have to do is say, well, if the bases are the same, then I can subtract the exponents. So keep the same base and subtract the exponents, and that's all there is to it. Now, sometimes you're going to run across problems that have negative exponents in them, and I always think it's best that before you apply the product rule or the quotient rule to any problem, rewrite that problem so that all the exponents are positive, because otherwise it's just too easy to make a sign error in your work. And then remember, at the end, always write your answer so that all exponents are positive. So you can't have negative exponents in your answer anyway. You may as well start off the problem by making all the exponents positive, and then that just makes everything flow so much more easily. So let's practice here in example four using the quotient rule. So we're going to simplify, and it says we can assume that all variables represent non-zero real numbers and make sure to write your answer with positive exponents. So here we have 3 to the 8th power divided by 3 to the 5th power. Now if you just imagine what this would look like if we had to write all the 3's out, you can see that some of the 3's in the top would cancel the 3's in the denominator. There are more 3's in the top than there are in the denominator. So 8 minus 5 is 3, and the leftover threes are going to be in the top. So the answer will just be three to the third power. It would not be difficult to evaluate three to the third power, but because they said write your answer with positive exponents, we'll just leave it in this exponential form. Okay, on part B, we have four to the second power divided by four to the ninth power. Now this time, there are more fours in the denominator than there are in the top. So this time when we subtract, we'll start with the bottom exponent and we'll say 9 minus 2 is 7. But you can see that the leftover 4's are going to be in the denominator. So this answer is going to be 1 over 4 to the 7th. On part C, I would not try to add or subtract these exponents until I have them in a positive form. So we'll use our negative to positive exponent rule to change this so that we have 5 to the 7th in the top and 5 to the 3rd in the bottom. Now I can see that there are more 5's in the top than there are in the bottom. 7 minus 3 will be 4, so there are 4 leftover 5's and those leftovers are in the top. So I'll just write this as 5 to the 4th. And continuing with example 4, here we have 4 more expressions to work on. So let's look at part D, which is q to the fifth power divided by q to the negative third power. See, this is a quotient, but I would not use the quotient rule here until I have made this q to the negative third have a positive exponent. So of course, we'll move that q to the negative third up to the top, but we won't move the q to the fifth because its exponent is already positive. So that's going to give us q to the fifth times q to the third. And now you can see that all the q's are in the top and we really don't need the quotient rule at all, we need the product rule. So q to the fifth times q to the third is going to make q to the eighth. Now on part e, we have three squared times x to the fifth over three to the fourth times x to the third. 
So let's work first with the threes. I have two threes in the top and four threes in the bottom. So definitely more threes are in the denominator. To subtract the exponents, I'll say four minus two, and I know the leftover threes are gonna be in the denominator. So I'll put three squared here in the bottom. And then when I look at the x's, there are more x's in the top than there are in the bottom. So five minus three is two, and the leftover x's are in the top, so I'll put x squared in the top. Here on part f, we have m plus n to the negative second power over m plus n to the negative fourth power. Now again, I would not start working on this problem until I have rewritten it in positive exponent form. So we'll use our negative to positive exponent rules to move m plus n to the negative fourth up to the top. That's going to make m plus n to the positive fourth. And then we'll move m plus n to the negative second to the bottom. That's going to make in the denominator m plus n to the second power. Now you can see that we have four of these parentheses in the top. We have only two in the bottom. Four minus two is two. So that's going to leave m plus n to the second power, and that's in the top. So it's over 1, but we don't have to write over 1. On part g, we have 7x to the negative third times y to the second, all over 2 to the negative first, x squared, y to the negative fifth. This is all multiplication and division. So we have permission to move these factors around until we have all positive exponents. So the 7 has a positive exponent already. I'm going to leave the 7 in the top. This x to the negative third needs to be made a positive exponent. So I'm going to move x to the negative third to the bottom. That's going to make it have a positive exponent. And then we have y squared. That exponent is already positive, so that will stay in the top. And then when we go to the denominator, this 2 has a negative exponent. So I'll move it to the top. That's going to give me 2 to the positive first power. This x squared already has a positive exponent, so don't move it. We'll leave that in the bottom. And then y to the negative fifth needs to be moved to the top, so it can be y to the positive fifth. Now all we have to do is use our product rule to get these bases combined. So 7 times 2 is 14 y squared times y to the fifth is going to be y to the seventh, and in the denominator, x to the third times x to the second is going to be x to the fifth. And now you see all the exponents are positive and each base occurs only one time, so we know that one's finished. Now here's a summary of all the exponent rules we've learned, and we have the whole set now, so let's just kind of take an inventory here. We have the product rule, which lets us multiply expressions with the same base by adding the exponent. We have the zero exponent rule, which says that anything to the zero power is one. We have the negative exponent rule, which says that we can make a negative exponent positive by moving that factor to the denominator. We have the quotient rule, which says that we can do division by subtracting the exponents. We have three different varieties of the power rule. So if you have a power raised to a power, you multiply the exponents. If you have a product in parentheses that's being raised to a power, you can get rid of the parentheses by applying that power to each factor inside the parentheses. Same thing with a quotient. And then we have these negative to positive rules, which said that if you have a negative exponent in the top or in the bottom, you can move those factors around to get positive exponents. Or if you have a fraction with a negative exponent, you can just flip the fraction over to make the whole thing have a positive exponent. And now we're about to tackle a few problems that ask us to use combinations of the rules. So you need to know that when more than one exponent rule applies, there is often more than one order that you can use to simplify. As long as you apply all the rules in the right way, you have some freedom as far as the order that you do the steps. So basically, you just need to know what are they expecting from me when they ask me to simplify. How will I know when I've done all the simplifying there is to do? So an exponential expression is considered simplified when you've met these conditions. 
No parentheses are necessary. That is, you will have worked out all the parentheses. Each base occurs only once. All the exponents are positive. If you have exponents of 0 or 1, you don't write them. So, you know, if you had x to the 0, you just wouldn't write anything. If you had x to the 1st, you would just write x. And if you have constants raised to powers, that you've evaluated those. So again, as long as you've met all of these conditions, the order that you apply the rules in won't make any difference. Now let's look at example 5. So notice that the instructions only say simplify. They are not going to tell us which rule to use. So we just have to be able to look at the problem and decide for ourselves which rule we want to apply first. And then we have to make sure we leave our answer in that fully simplified form. So here we have 4 squared raised to the third power, over 4 to the fifth power. So the first thing I would like to do is eliminate these parentheses by using the power rule. So remember when we have power raised to power, we multiply the exponents. So the top part of our expression is going to be 4 to the sixth power, because 2 times 3 is 6, and in the denominator we have 4 to the fifth power. Now we can use the quotient rule. Notice that we have six fours in the top and only five fours in the bottom. Six minus five is one, so we're going to end up with four to the first power, which is just four. On part b, I think I would rewrite this so that all of the exponents are positive before I start trying to use any product or quotient rules. So I would leave the x squared in the top. I would move x to the negative sixth to the bottom, so it can be x to the positive sixth. And then I would move x to the negative 1 to the bottom, so it can be x to the positive 1. Now notice that 6 plus 1 is 7, so that leaves us with x squared over x to the 7th. And now notice that we have more x's in the denominator than we do in the top. 7 minus 2 is 5, so that's going to leave us with 1 over x to the 5th power. And this is considered fully simplified because we don't have any parentheses, we don't have any bases occurring more than once, and the one exponent that we do have is positive. Now let's look at part C. We have 2x to the third times 2x to the second. So both of these have a base of 2x. Let's just get a total exponent for this base. So three of them here and two of them here makes a total of five. So that gives us 2x to the fifth power, now we can use power rule B to apply this 5 exponent to each factor inside the parentheses. So that's going to give us 2 to the 5th times x to the 5th. And then notice that we have a constant with an exponent here, so that can be worked out. 2 to the 5th power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 32. And then we still have our x to the 5th. So this one comes out 32x to the 5th. And here are our last three examples. Here we have 2x to the third over 5, all raised to the negative fourth. Now inside the parentheses, all the exponents are already positive. So I would like to first eliminate this negative on this outside exponent by writing this in reciprocal form. So that's going to give us 5 over 2x to the third, all raised to the positive fourth power. Now I want to apply power rule C. So I'm going to apply this outside exponent to every factor inside the parentheses. That's going to give us 5 to the 4th power over 2 to the 4th power times x to the 3rd to the 4th power. And now we'll just have to work each one of these out. 5 to the 4th is 625. We've seen that one several times. Over 2 to the 4th is 16. And x to the third to the fourth requires us to use power rule a. So we know 3 times 4 is 12, so that's going to give us x to the twelfth power here. Now, this fraction cannot be reduced because this contains only factors of 5 and 16 contains only factors of 2. So we don't have anything to reduce here. Our exponent that we do have is positive, and so this one's complete. Now let's look at part e. Instead of starting by eliminating this outside negative exponent, 
I'm going to start by moving these factors inside the parentheses. So the 3 is already 3 to the first. We'll leave that alone. And I'll move x to the negative 2 to the denominator. 4 to the negative 1 is going to have to go to the top. And then this y to the third can stay in the denominator. Okay, now let's see what we've got inside the parentheses. 3 times 4 is 12. And in the bottom, we still have x to the second, y to the third. And that's all still being raised to the negative third power. Now I'm ready to deal with this outside negative exponent. So now I'm going to write this in reciprocal form. So that will give us x squared y to the third over 12, all now to the positive third power. And now we can apply power rule C. So I'm going to apply this outside 3 to each factor inside the parentheses. That's going to make x squared to the third power times y to the third to the third power all over 12 to the third power. Now here in the top we need power rule A. So x squared to the third is going to give us x to the sixth. y to the third to the third is going to give us y to the ninth. In the bottom we'll have to work out 12 times 12 times 12. It's not that hard to do. You know 12 times 12 is 144. So if you have to write down the multiplication and work out 144 times 12, that's fine. I had to do the same thing. I just did not have room to show it to you here. So 12 times 12 times 12 gives us 1,728. And notice that all of our exponents are positive, and we have no parentheses, and each base occurs only once. Now for part f, here we have 4m all to the negative third power over 3m all to the negative fourth power. Let's start by making our exponents positive. So that's going to give us 3m to the fourth in the top and 4m to the third in the denominator. Now let's apply power rule c to the expression in the top and also the expression in the bottom. Notice that I can't use the quotient rule to subtract these exponents because their bases are not the same. So all I can do right now is eliminate these parentheses. So that's going to give me 3 to the 4th times m to the 4th over 4 to the 3rd times m to the 3rd. Now 3 to the 4th we can work out. We know 3 to the 4th is 81. And now let's go ahead and look at our variables. We have m to the 4th over m to the 3rd. So here we can use the quotient rule to say 4 minus 3 is 1. That gives us m to the first power, and I know it belongs in the top because there are more m's in the top than there were in the bottom. And also notice that I didn't write m to the first, I just wrote m because we never want to explicitly write that exponent of 1. And then in the bottom we have 4 to the third, which is 4 times 4 times 4, so that's going to be 64. So here we have 81m over 64, and that one's finished. Now, I know I've said this several times before, but I hope that you'll spend some time, you know, really thinking about these exponent rules. Work all the different kinds of problems that you can, because the more different problems you see, the better you'll be at using the rules, and the better they'll stick with you, too. So this is just a matter of practice. Everything we've learned in this section is going to be used throughout the rest of the math courses that you have to take, and everything in this section can be learned through repetition and practice. So don't skimp on your exponent exercises.